Amen. Amen. We are worshiping the Lord on this morning. I don't know about you, but I am excited. I am praising God uh, for our young adults on today, our alumni, all those who participated in our program. Amen. 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 I greet you all this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Uh, blessings to our pastor, first lady, our ministerial staff, our officers, members, and visitors. Um, as always, I thank uh, Reverend Simley and God for another opportunity to preach the word of God uh, to my parents and my husband for your consistent prayers and for your support. Again, to those who participated on the program today, thank you. Those who shared how HBCUs have made a difference in their lives. They are a living testimony that your giving will not be in vain. HBCUs do matter. I know it was nothing but the grace of God and the generous donors that helped me get through school. And I'm thankful for my HBCU. Shout out to Virginia State University. VSU, you know. Amen. Amen. I'm excited. I can get excited about my HBCU but it is preaching time, amen. It is preaching time and there is indeed a word from the Lord. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you God for this day, God. We thank you God for this moment in time, God. We pray right now that your spirit, God, will continue to manifest itself, Lord God, that your word will go forth and not return void, but will accomplish what you set it out to do. Have your way right now, Lord God, in this preaching moment that the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts will be found acceptable in your sight. For God, you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. I am going to lift up a portion of what was read in our scripture earlier, um, picking out that very familiar, familiar verse there of John 3.16. We're keeping it, keeping it simple. Amen. This morning. John 3.16, I'm going to read it from the King James and then from the message, but you all know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And then the message says it like this. This is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son. And this is why, so that no one need be destroyed. By believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. Amen. And for the few moments that I have before you this morning, I want to preach from the sermon topic, giving it the best that I got, giving you the best that I've got. Now, I know some of you went back to Anita Baker on that one, uh -huh, but just stick with me this morning. Amen. In fact, we are going to go back just a little bit, back to uh, the 1800s when majority of our historical Black colleges and universities known as HBCUs were established. You know, our HBCUs were birthed out of a struggle. They were established to provide undergraduate and graduate level educational opportunities to people of African descent. Uh, this was at a time when Black students were unwelcome at existing public and private institutions of higher learning resulting in the lack of higher education opportunities. So they were created, our HBCUs were created with purpose and passion. Uh, those before us sacrificed and suffered so that our future would be better. They indeed believed that our children were the world and that they were the future. They wanted to ensure that their children and their children's children would be afforded a decent education, that they will be able to study in the great halls of academia and become teachers and lawyers, engineers and counselors and executives and whatever they set out to be. And while today, when we think of HBCUs, we think of the bands and the homecoming and the Greek sororities and fraternities, let us not forget about the rich history that makes us so proud to say, I like my H in front of my B, my B in front of my C, my C in front of my U, I love my HBCU. And while we're talking about love and pride in history 
and sacrifice. Let us turn our attention now to our sermon text of John 3, 16, which says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish and have everlasting life. Uh, while today we may gaze up at an empty cross and, and wear a cross around our necks and get crosses tatted on our bodies, let us not forget the passion and the sacrifice that happened on that old rugged cross. Yes, that old rugged cross where God allowed his son to die for the sins of the world. That old rugged cross where God loved us so much that he gave us the best that he had. Come on, on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. Y'all know it. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross to my trophies. At last I lay down, I will cling to that old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. One day, beloved, we will exchange our cross for a crown. Because don't you know that even when you give God your worst, he still gives us his best, my God. How many can declare this morning that I gave him my old filthy garments and he gave me a robe of pure white. I gave him my pain and, and he gave me praise. I, I gave him my burdens and he gave me blessings. I gave him my fears and he gave me faith. I gave him my sins and he gave me salvation. Somebody ought to type amen. God wants it all. Give it all to him, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And then after you lay down your burdens, after you've given him the hard stuff, he wants you to get up and give him the best that you've got. How many to, can declare, I give myself away so God can use me, that my life is not my own, but to God I belong. I give myself away. Some of you from the old school might say it like this. I surrender all, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. All to Jesus I surrender all to thee I freely give. God wants all of you. It is Youth and Young Adult Sunday and HBCU Sunday. If I can remix the words of John Legend, I would say, all of God wants all of you. All your sins and indiscretions, all your perfect imperfections. God says, give your all to me. I gave my all to you. I'll be your ending, your beginning. Even when you lose your winning. Yeah, give it all. Give it all to him. Stop holding back on God. God sees more in you than he wants. Young people, God sees more in you than you see in yourself. Remember that he knew you before you were even formed in your mother's belly. You are marvelously and wonderfully made and he knows what your future holds. And guess what? God needs you too, young people, yeah. Don't, don't think God only needs adults. Uh, he needs kids and, and teenagers and, and young adults too, just like he needed David, just like he needed Timothy, just like he needed Mary. He needs you too. And not only does he need you, but he actually wants you. Do you know that God gets excited? When you see, when he sees you ministering in song and reading a scripture, uh, he gets thrilled when you give him praise. God wants you. He gets happy when you come to him with your problem. No, he's not happy that you have a problem, but he's happy that you decided to talk to him about your problem. He wants you to give it all to him. You don't have to carry it by yourself. You don't have to hold on to those feelings and emotions alone. God wants you to give it to him. He wants you to free yourself from your hurt, from, from your pain, from your anger, from your sadness so that you can then give him the best that you've got. God wants the very best for you and he wants you to give him the best that you've got. As you continue through the challenge of virtual learning, I encourage you to give it 
the best that you got. As you return to in-person learning, I want you to give it the best that you got. As you take the SAT and prepare for college or job interviews, I want you to give it the best that you got. Work hard so that you too can go to an HBCU or a college of your choice or pick up a trade or, or start a business. I want to encourage our young people this morning. Come on, y'all know I like I like songs, amen. And if I could just use another lyric, uh-huh. It's a kind of new singer out. His name is Vito. Come on, the young people know what I'm talking about. If I could just borrow his lyrics as a means of encouragement, I would say to our young people, you got it, get your glow up. I know that you are gonna get it, you got so much. Don't let nobody tell you that it's over. You got it, you got it. Oh, some young person ought to type, I got it. Come on, let me see it in the comments. Let me see it in the chat. Some older person ought to type, giving it the best that I've got. Giving it the best that I've got. You, you, you wanna know how people like Governor Warnock became the first black senator in the state of Georgia? It's because he gave it the best that he had. From more House to Congress, he gave it the best that he had. You wanna know how Kamala Harris became the first black female vice president? It's because she gave it the best that she had. From Howard to the White House, she gave it the best that she had. And when we give our best, I just believe that God will do the rest. Yes, when we give God our best, he'll do the rest. To the parents, I know it's been a challenging 12 months, but keep giving it your best and trust God to do the rest. To our teachers and nurses, frontline workers, keep giving it your best and trust God to do the rest. Preachers, keep doing our best and trust God to do the rest. In our service to God and to his people, all he's asking is our best. Yeah, you may not be able to tithe like you want, but all he's asking is that you give him the best that you got. You may not pray or fast like you should, but you gotta give it the best that you got. I'm about to wrap it up. I say I won't be, be too long this morning, but as we worship, on this, our HBCU Sunday, I'm sure many of you who attended an HBCU or even other colleges took a trip down memory lane <laughs> and began to remember what it was like hanging out on the yard. Yeah. You remember what it was like watching the Greek probates and the step shows. You remember how fun you had at homecoming. But do you also remember the hard work you had to put into study? Do you remember staying up all night to finish that paper? Do you remember eating oodles and noodles because that was the only thing you could afford? Do you remember trying to maintain that GPA so that you did not lose that scholarship? Well, beloved, it's that same push, that same drive, that same commitment that God wants from you now. God gave his one and only, and in this season, where we draw closer to the cross, will you give God the best that you got? I come to remind someone this morning that there is more that God requires of you. We are a blessed people. In spite of it all, God is taking care of us. God is still supplying all of our needs. He has given us so much. And the Bible says, to whom much is given, much will be required. God gave his son. What will you give to God? Jesus gave up everything at the cross just for you. Yeah, yeah, Jesus went to, to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. They hung him high and they stretched him wide. He hung his head and for me and you, he died. But that's not how the story ends y'all because we know that Easter is coming. But for right now, I want us to just focus on the cross. Just focus on the cross because it was at the cross that God gave us his best. It was at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light 
and the burdens of my sins rolled away. It was there by faith that I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. I'm happy, y'all, because Jesus died for me. I'm happy because I don't have to live with guilt and shame. I'm happy because God just keeps on blessing me. I'm happy because I know that God gave us the best that he had. Yeah, I love my HBCU, but guess what? I love Jesus more. I love God more. Why? Because he first loved me for God. So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God gave us his best. And now God is asking, will you give him your best? Giving it the best that I've got. Amen. Amen. And praise the Lord. As I now open up the doors of the church, I want somebody to know that God wants all of you. He says, come to me as you are. Yeah, you, 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 you who's watching, you, you who, who's listening right now. God wants you. you. You may be thinking, God can't possibly want me. I, I messed up too much. God can still use you. Perhaps there's some young person watching or some college student watching who may be thinking, I've done too much wrong. Well, I want you to know that God wants you and that he still loves you. In fact, if you were the only one in the world, Jesus would have still died. He would have still died just for you because he loved the world so much that he gave his son that whoever believed, whoever believed shall have everlasting life. He didn't say perfect people would have everlasting life. He didn't say only those who had it all together would have everlasting life. He said, whoever believes would have everlasting life. Do you believe this morning? If you believe and want to accept Jesus into your heart and into your life, then dial the church at 410-922-3286, option four. Someone will walk you through the process. If you believe that Jesus is the son of God, that he died and was raised from the dead, you shall be saved. And maybe you already are saved, but you're looking for a church home. Our motto at Union Bethel is we are family. We welcome you to become part of our family today. If you want to join our church, again, dial 410-922-3286, option four, and someone will gladly walk you through the process. Let us now pray. It's prayer time. And for some of us, it's been a whole year since we physically were able to come to the altar for prayer. So we now create an altar in our personal spaces and in our hearts where we can bring our burdens to the Lord and leave them there. And those who come to the altar for special prayer, we lift them up to you today in this virtual space, God. We lift up prayers and requests for our young people, for Thelma Daniels' uh, twins, grandsons, Christopher and Christian, as they begin their journey to become U.S. Marines. God, we ask that you protect and cover them. We lift up special prayers for young people in college. God, let us not forsake them. We pray for our young people everywhere who may feel like the church has abandoned them and that God has turned his back on them let them know, God, that most of all, you are with them. But then show us ways to reach out to support them. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity of higher education. And we thank you, God, for those who gave today so that others can be afforded this opportunity. God, we pray for those experiencing health challenges, those that are bereft of loved ones, those, God, battling storms that no one even knows about. God, we pray for the less fortunate, those who feel forgotten. Help us, God, to minister unto them. God, we pray for our pastor and his family, our church family, our community, our government, and the world. Help us, God, to give us, help us, God, to give you 
the best that we've got. God, may you now bless and keep us. May you cause your face to shine upon us and give us peace both now and forevermore. Amen, amen, and amen.